to your Daily Five for Monday, January 15th, 2024. Over the weekend, I watched a 1984 slasher film called Fatal Games. Now, this is, I said it was 1984, this is a mid-80s slasher film that did what a lot of films of this time period did, once the, the trend was kind of going up and going down, is they tried to do a themed slasher. Kind of like I've reviewed Death Spa, I've talked about Killer Workout, those are centered around exercise and gyms. This one is centered around Olympic hopefuls. Now, on the surface, that sounds like it might have a lot of potential, because what you really go into movies like this looking for, outside of, unless you're going in for so bad it's good films, and I'll tell you right up front, this movie isn't bad enough to qualify for that. It really isn't a terribly made film. It's actually, at times, well-directed, but when you have a movie that's either okay or somewhat all right, you then are looking for the variety in the murders. You're looking for creative kills or special effects. That's what most of these movies tried to trade on and in many cases did very well a lot of special effects artists got started doing this type of stuff and then went on to bigger and better things but they really kind of cut their teeth on doing these types of movies where there really wasn't a lot of budget for big stars there wasn't a lot of budget for locations or anything else but they maximized the effects so that you would remember the movie and want to watch it because of those kills fatal games i guess fatal flaw pun intended haha is that it doesn't do enough with the olympic idea uh, and this isn't really a spoiler because this happens right away and it just sticks with this the whole movie. The murder weapon of the killer is a javelin. Now that itself is an Olympic sport, an Olympic, I, guess, I was going to say weapon, an Olympic athletic device. How do you describe these things? Whatever it is, it is definitely in with the Olympics, but you see at multiple other points that there are different Olympic events that each of the people that are being hunted compete in. And yet none of the equi equipment, that's it, equipment. None of the equipment that they're using is utilized in their deaths. For example, there's, let's say you have a shot putter. That's a classic kind of, or a discus. These are classic Olympic kind of competitions. Then you have the murder of the person doing the shot put be killed by the shot put ball. You have a person, I don't know, pole vault. They, they rig it so it blows up when they clear the hurdle, whatever. That's what you would expect in a movie like this, but you don't get that. You just have the killer killing everybody with a javelin. And look, the effects for that are fine enough, but the javelin is not like, say, a lawnmower or a chainsaw where you can get all that creative. You're essentially just stabbing somebody. So there's only so much that even the special effects are going to be able to do in terms of wowing the audience. And it never becomes something where you're impressed by what you see outside of, you know, they made it look really good when it's coming out of somebody on two ends. It looks, it doesn't ever like break or wobble or anything. It looks good that way. But it doesn't make for a very visually interesting thing when somebody gets killed with a javelin. You kind of know what you're getting after a while, and it never really varies all that much. Except for one scene, one particular scene, but that's at the very end. However, I don't want to make this out like I think it's a bad movie. It's a perfectly fine movie. It's a very good one-time watch if you're into 80s slashers if you really like theme slashers, if you just want to have a fun time with something for about 90 minutes, it's the acting at times is hilariously bad, but the movie overall is well made enough. There are some interesting shots where you can see they put some thought into it. Some of the actors and actresses are actually quite good. Some are quite bad, but that's, you'll hear clips of that on Friday when I talk about it in detail. But the biggest thing when you get to the end is you think, wow, there's a lot of potential in this idea. Even within the framework of what the movie shows us, you could have done more with it, and they really just don't push it as far as they should have. When I reviewed Death Spa and Killer Workout, I liked both of those movies because in Death Spa's case, the, the kills were creative and interesting, and in Killer Workout's case, I thought there was actually secretly a very good story that just wasn't done very well in there. Something like Fatal Games is where most of these movies end up. It's a fun enough time to watch. Now, I watched it on YouTube. The quality wasn't all that great because it's only available right now physically from Vinegar Syndrome, and I was not convinced, and I really don't feel like I judged it incorrectly. I didn't feel like this was something I wanted to blind by. I felt like I wanted to watch this first and then see if it was something unique enough to get. And honestly, I wouldn't buy it. I would have rented it, and I wouldn't have felt like I had wasted my money, but since it wasn't available to rent, at least not at the time of this recording... I'm glad I watched it on YouTube, even though the, the quality of the video was pretty bad. The audio was fine, but the video was pretty bad. So I'm sure Vinegar Syndrome's look looks better. They don't do lazy work in that respect. But Fatal Games is one of those movies that, for the, for the completionist, for a slasher fan, it's a good one-time watch. But would you ever watch it again? Probably not. Later.